So I rode at the Can-Am Equine Expo this weekend and had a lot of fun. It was a really neat learning opportunity and I'm going to share some of that footage with you today so you can sort of learn and live with me as, as we went through these three days. I decided to apply to the clinic when I discovered it online that you could apply to ride with Beth Underhill because she's been a role model of mine since I was a little girl, ever since I saw her win the Shell Cup Derby with her horse Monopoly, who was 22 years at the time. And so that was a, a pretty unique opportunity for me. So I sent in my application, even though here at the farm, because we don't have an indoor arena yet, we haven't been riding all that regularly. So I haven't been jumping a lot and doing a lot of canter work at home. But I thought, you know what, this is a great opportunity, so I'm gonna take a chance, apply. So I had to send in a video application and Beth handpicked me and one other rider to be in the clinic and then she brought along one of her other Grand Prix students, uh, Carly, to ride in the clinic as well. So that was a pretty uh, unique achievement or pretty exciting that she chose me out of uh, I don't know how many people. So I was pretty excited about that. And once I found out that I was going to be riding in the clinic, I actually took my horse to a Trillium show just so that way I could ride in an indoor arena and jump some jumps because there aren't really any schooling opportunities around right now. So that's uh, how we sort of got into the Can-Am show and what we did to prepare to get ready for it. Unfortunately, we weren't you know, as fit as maybe we should have been because we weren't able to practice all that much uh, with the footing. So when taking a look at the footage that I'm going to show you, day one I was really nervous. I was riding with Beth Underhill. I really didn't want to let her down because I knew she chose me and it meant a lot to me to get to ride with her. So I was really, really nervous. And some people might think that's odd for me because I do compete in some pretty big shows and I've done clinics myself and been in trade shows. But for whatever reason, I was really nervous. And I'm going to share with you some pretty embarrassing moments. I was mortified thinking about watching the footage. Took a look at it, it wasn't that bad, except for when I forgot my course at the end of the show. But uh, it's important to share, I think, just because we're all human and we all have learning experiences. And I think I can just benefit from looking at that. And now we're gonna work some transitions into our flat work to work on our horse's response time. Sitting trot, eyes up, Deirdre. Active at the sitting trot, prepare to halt and halt. Good, excellent halt, Deirdre. Prepare to trot on sitting and trot on. Very good, posting trot, lengthening the stride. Lengthening the stride with an even contact. Very good, and sitting trot, compress the stride. All these are exercises asking our horses to respond to the leg, to the hand, and be really precise in our aids. Prepare to halt and halt. Deirdre, turn on the haunches to change direction. So a diagonal aid, left hand, right leg, haunches stay still. Very good. Carly, maybe back up a step and then turn, turn on the haunches. This is a young horse, so she's quietly asking him what she wants. Very good. Excellent. And Lindsay, shoulders tall, a little more right leg, ask, tell, demand, and push it back even one more step. Good. So it was good that you took it in sections because he wasn't quite certain what you wanted. Next time maybe keep a little more active leg so he understood to stay more smooth through that exercise. Okay, and prepare to trot on sitting. Close your leg, close your fingers, and sitting trot. So on that, Lindsay, I would say your horse is the opposite. He's a little too open in this step, right? So let's half halt and close the horse's stride and see if we can organize that canter a little better. Now with more difficulty, we'll be working on transitions. Prepare to halt and halt. Excellent, Carly. Maybe watch your brain length a little bit. Prepare to canter and canter. One clear aid, keep the flexion gently to the inside. Weight down into the heel on those transitions. Thinking about not locking the elbow, arc, Carly, keeping there for some flexibility there. Good, keep extending the canter a little bit more, Deirdre.
And prepare to walk. And walk. Super. Let's halt. And here for a changing direction now with a turn on the forehand. Okay, and Lindsay. More left leg. Keep that head and neck. Wait a little. 
That's better. You need to have your outside rein in place earlier and your outside leg. Just trot the in if you find it's too much for him from the canter. That's it. Leg. That's right. Back to trots. Outside rein. Try and avoid circling. Keep your outside rein and leg. Leg a little. Very good. That was better. Much better. So, um, so the problem with the circle is it becomes a habit and it becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So plan to just activate that outside rein so you're keeping the horse straight and square. And then when you're in if in doubt, if you find the exercise is getting a little too complex, simplify it by coming back to a trot and trotting the in at the next line rather than saying, okay, I'm gonna just circle and circle and circle. Because that's just keeping you more and more on that inside rein. And here you got a little bit caught and putting it in more. Back to trot. Trot circle to get it up side ready. It's the only time we're going to like a circle. <laughs> Slow your rise just a little bit. definitely nervous, really humiliated that I forgot my course, which was absolutely terrifying, but Beth was awesome about it. We chatted after the uh, ride and she really helped sort of calm my nerves, so I definitely felt a little bit better going into day two, but I also realized that I needed to be more precise with my transitions and be really more precise just about riding my whole course, thinking about all the strides going around the corners, using my outside aids more, and uh, getting more directed, not sort of resorting to those circles to get myself organized, but instead being organized ahead of time. So what I did before heading into day two is I took my horse out before the show earlier in the morning because we didn't ride until two that day. So I took him out at around 8 a.m. and I rode him out on the field outside and I practiced my transitions. And I was riding just in the Hackamore and it went awesome. He was amazing. He was starting to really respond to my leg. I was getting my halt canter transitions and um, canter halt was still harder because he's got a lot of go and a lot of power but he was definitely responding a lot better. We were doing our flying lead changes and I was feeling more on my game. So heading into ride two with uh, Beth I was already feeling a lot more confident. We then tried to do the bit and hack more together because Beth really wanted me to be in a bit but I didn't want to be in a bit exclusively because I know he starts to toss his head when I have a bit. So now we'll take a look at that footage. Knowing what you need to work on, what his strong point is. His step is naturally big and naturally open. We like to work on a little bit more compression, vice right? versa. to me because we know this horse has a very big stride. If anything, he opens and gets a little 
little bit too keen at the jump. So let's add now a new six. Drop down into your seat. Close. Beautifully done. Come back and walk. And just for fun, let's try seven. I mean, again, for you, this would be a little extreme. It's something I probably would work towards accomplishing. But you're doing so well at getting in a little more compressed today. Let's try this out. And that doesn't mean you want to come out of the corner and just add and add and add to the jump. It means you want to have the shape created already that gives you that stride length. Pick up your hand a little shorter range. Circle. Because your banner is too long. A little bit more compression. Sit, sit, and close. That's it, right there. Stay with that. And wait. Wait. And wait. And wait. And wait. <laughs> there we go. You were this close, huh? I see you Back to trot. And canter. Okay, very nice. Try to make that transition up to canter a little bit earlier, Lindsay, so that you have more time to judge your distance. Slow hand and canter. Walk. So, what I get out of this from your horse is much better, but he's a little bit late to react to your age. Now he's a little bit resistant when you ask him to make a downward transition, and then he's a little late for your leg on the upward transition. So let's try that again and just see if you can make those transitions happen a little bit earlier. Let him cut to the right. Both rings. Excellent. That's okay. Okay, go all the way around to that line one more time. Keep your shoulder back a little more and bend your elbow. And that's going to naturally bring his balance more uphill. That's right. Six again. Close, close. That's right. Good for you. So much better than this. Oh, that was a six. Very, very good. Good again. And okay, apart from yesterday, we had a problem with Lindsay doing a lot of circling today. <laughs> I think very little. That's great. Really good to see. Huge improvement with you and your horse today. Okay, let's finish up on the same map. Anyway, it's super good. Think about keeping that hand low and steady so he accepts the contact. That's right.
Yeah, so I that I can finish on the next And just think about a little bit more of a, a following release. As he leaves the ground, allow your hand to go with him. Wait. More legs stay much straighter. And close. Close. Four, five, six. Beautiful. See the difference? When you lower and release your hand, his head and neck stay lower. His shape is better. So therefore, you can shake and loosen the top. Right? You get to jump off. So after day two riding, I felt a lot better. I remembered my courses, which was great. And uh, I felt like we were steering better because I was using my outside aids more and I was more relaxed, more confident in getting my spots. I was letting my legs slip back, which is something that I never do pretty much. I've got lots of footage of me showing and I don't think that's something that virtually ever happens. So that was kind of embarrassing. And that, I think, um, Beth nailed it when she said, you know, I'm holding him because I'm collecting him so much and that I wasn't really releasing. So that was a learning for me to um, figure that out a little bit more. The exercises she was having us do, being really precise with our strides and counting our strides and shortening and lengthening were all great learning experiences and also doing the transitions between the fences, being that equally responsive to go and low, I thought was really important and something that we're definitely going to have to continue working on back at home. So do I think that the bid and the hack and more made that much of a difference? We definitely rode better on day two, but if I think if we look at the footage from day one, I think my horse looked a lot happier. I wasn't riding as well. I was really nervous, but he wasn't tossing his head or doing um, any of those movements. Uh, you know, he seemed more in tune with me if I was actually paying attention. So, but either way, uh, we felt like it was better than day one, so we carried that forward into day three, and now we'll take a look at day three. Try and grab that and keep your shoulders a little bit slower. Calm with your trends. That's better. When we stay calm as a rider, our horse follows suit. Nice. Remember your release, plan your turn. Okay, a little straighter, middle to middle. That's right, middle, outside leg. Much better, and walk. I don't mind that little mistake. That was, that was his mistake, that's a learning error. He a little bit, as you know, he has a difficulty with his mouth, he gets a little stiff. So just by, you know, him learning to relax a bit to your hand, that hind end will get clean. Let's come left knee. Your task with this horse, Lindsay, is to keep one rhythm, okay? And also to be straight. He likes to get his hips to the outside. So guard him with your outside leg. Eyes. You can look early without turning early. Good. Try and encourage that left lead a little more. Make that transition to canter sooner. See if it breaks, correct him right away. Nice. Excellent. Once more. Leg. Nice. Good and straight. Beautiful. And walk. Excellent. Well done, you guys. Simpler answer. Carly? 
To the vertical, this is twice. TV. Okay, simple answer, 2D. What does that mean? If the perfect big off spot, the height of the jump away, here's where your tippy toes were for your horses. You can't jump out of that distance. Okay, so you needed to create a little bit more room. I think you lost him in the turn, and like uh, Carly said, your eye went down. Keep your eye up and keep, keep that rhythm through the turn, and there would have been one left step there. Because that's, that's, that's all of that. Uh, Kamini didn't he try very hard and had a, quite a, you know, a little bit of a rub there. Uh, what I like to see is that he's much more organized and he's much more uh, consistent in his job. Do you agree? Oh, no, no, not there, but I the other one. no refusals or anything like that and what really stood out for me was Beth's comment right at the end when she said you know your horse clearly just really wants to try for you he's got a great heart and he's really doing everything you ask and that meant a lot to me because 
that's what we do here at PHH with the natural horsemanship is we really try to get inside our horse's heads and create that partnership of a horse that really wants to work for us. So when she said those words, I just thought, yeah, that's awesome. That's a great compliment because that's really what we've been working on. So that was really rewarding for me. One of the, the other uh, cool things about being in the Can-Am show was the behind the scenes atmosphere. It was just really cool that you know, you'd be standing back there in the stalls and Beth Underhill would be there and Guy McLean would walk by with his horses and we'd be riding in the same ring together and Jonathan Fields would be there and you could just chat to him and there was no sort of separation between um, like when you go to the Royal or something like that where the high A-list names they've got sort of their own aisle and you're not allowed to go there. It was just neat to be back there and just getting to sort of talk to anybody and everybody and some people that you wouldn't normally get a chance to connect with and the friendships that we made too, Carly and Deidre were the girls that I rode with were super awesome and that whole environment and experience was super amazing and I'm very glad that I went.